Well, to discuss this, we're joined in Warsaw by Dominik Tarczynski. He's a Polish MP with the ruling Law and Justice Party in Washington, D.C. We have Mark Morano. He's the executive director of Climate Depot, a website that disputes the scientific consensus on climate change. And finally, in Katowice, Poland, is James Elsmore. He's the founder of the group Solar Head of State, which works with governments to promote renewable energy. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. James, let me begin with you. There are people who see this conference as the most important since the Paris 2015 conference. Do you agree with that? Well, this conference is all about setting out the rule book for how we implement the Paris Agreement. And I think um, it's unfortunate that we've seen such a drive towards uh, non-renewable energy in this conference. I think there's a very important change that we saw since last year with Fiji chairing towards this year with Poland. And I think it's very important, important in the sense that the leadership around this conference is perhaps not as strong as it was last year. And that is very challenging for future negotiations. Tell me why it's not as strong, James. Well, Fiji is a small island developing state. It's particularly vulnerable to the risks of climate change. Um, we've seen hurricanes there year after year, and uh, there's a worry that these are only going to get worse and be combined with rising sea levels. And they were really representing the rest of the Pacific Islands um, and calling for strict cuts and a move away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy, as well as climate finance to address the impact of climate change for um, low-income countries. Now, in, in the Polish case, um, we're in a country that is 80%, um, 80 of the electricity is generated by coal. And there are very different, uh, there's a very different rationale of how we should deal, deal with climate change than we saw from the future. Yeah, President Duda refusing to abandon coal says it does not contradict the protection of the climate. Dominic Tarczynski, that's your government's position. You're hosting the conference. You must be proud to host the conference. Is it easy to square what seems to be two contradictory intentions? Protecting the environment, but also not wanting to gut a crucial driver of your economy. Yeah, obviously. I'm very proud that this conference is taking place in Poland, which proves that we really take care about our environment, that pollution is a very serious problem, and we are taking steps to get rid of pollution. And very important thing is that these contradictions which you mentioned, we can cope with that. First of all, our government started very important reform, which is called Clear Air. We're going to spend 3 billion euros for over a thousand buses, electrical, electrical buses. Then we, we, we are going to spend 250 million euros for new technology heaters in the private houses. We're going to mm -hmm. support those who will be happy to exchange the old technology for, for the new one. And very important thing, I'd like to show you specific data, which is important to our discussion about polluters in Europe. This is very important. Germany, 23%. Great Britain, 11.2%. Yeah, then you've got yeah, we can't Italy, fully see which that, actually. over I mean, 10%. You can tell and us we can't fully see that. Yeah, yeah. Certainly. Certainly. We can't fully see it because it's too far away, but we'll it's, take your it's, word it's, for it. Yeah. It's official data. You can, you can, yeah. you can Google it. It's, it's, what I'm trying to say is that Poland is not a biggest polluter, mm -hmm. as someone says, or trying to put the words into the mouth. Great Britain... Italy, um, uh, France. This is very important. So why I'm saying that? Because we need someone to cooperate. We need right. people to make these very important decisions together. We cannot have any kind of hypocrisy. And when you look at the history, because the pollution is a very, uh, a very serious issue, but this is political, historical and economical issue. When you go through the history and you see Germans, not, I'm not talking about Second World War II only, but 17, 18, 19th century, and, see, and you, see, you see Russians all these days, how they uh, reacted, how they treated Poland. We have to fight for our security with the energy. That's why we Understood. will never, ever stop uh, our safety. And at the moment, our uh, black gold is coal. So when we have Germany, you know, building Nord Stream 2, when we have France selling uh, warships, mistrals to Russia, we have to think about our security. Obviously, as I said, environment is very important for us. Right. I want my son and grandson to be healthy, to be happy with a beautiful environment. But we have to be responsible for the next generation and the safety of our nation. Yeah, let me bring in Mark Morano. So, Mark, interestingly, Dominic talks about not wanting to have pollution. There are those 
who agree with the scientific consensus who believe that beyond just actual pollution of the air, the burning of the fossil fuel coal leads to global warming. I guess that's what you would dispute. Do you accept the consensus that this conference mark that everybody's working towards lessening the burning of fossil fuels so that global warming also stops by 2050? No, I don't accept that consensus. And first of all, I'll be heading to Poland in a few days and I'll be there all next week. What Dominic said is exactly right. First of all, let's distinguish between actual pollution and carbon dioxide emissions. And yes, there's all kinds of technology and improvement and infrastructure development you can do to improve the results of coal burning to clean up your air. And Poland is doing that. But in terms of what Dominic just said about the history of Poland, yeah. to be dominated by Germany, then decades under the Soviet Union, all they've done now is essentially replaced a new regulatory body that's come in, and it's going to be the EU and the UN telling Poland how they can do their energy mix. 79% of Poland is coal miners. It's one of the most revered institutions. Polling shows that pol mine workers are considered higher, the, the highest, you know, most respected uh, citizens in the country. This is part of Polish nationalism. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. And what I would say to Dominic, what I would say to Poland is join President Trump, join Brazil, join these other countries that are taking a hard look and start this looking is at what a we way want. out we respect of this Donald UN Trump. mess, I which think can Donald only hurt Trump Poland. Is very right. Okay, so let me bring in James here because Thank you. something that's interesting here, but right? What and I'm trying to hold say, on, hold on, the European just a Union and UN, certainly. we are the part of this family. Okay, you are a part of this family. And something that's interesting here, we've heard it from other countries as well. They're saying, rich industrialized countries, you guys polluted the environment, you guys contributed to global warming while you industrialized, and now you're asking us to also shoulder the burden as we all get together. But hold on, why, why is it so imbalanced, right? That's, that's fundamentally one of the issues. Politically, but beyond that, James, let me bring you in here because what we're hearing from Mark and what we're hearing from Dominic as well is that they're sure about the fact that burning something like coal makes the air dirty, but they're not so sure about the other thing, which the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says is that if we don't stop burning coal as a fossil fuel, if we don't do it by 97% by 2015, we won't be able to limit global warming by 1.5%. So, James, how do you deal with the fact that fundamentally people believe very different things when it comes to why you should stop using coal as a fossil fuel? Well, absolutely. I think we can all accept air quality is a serious issue here in Silesia, Katowice, where we are. Um, in parts of the region this week, the, uh, the air quality has been reaching a critical state. Um, the equivalent of being outside to smoking 10 to 20 cigarettes a day, depending on where you are. So we can all agree that that is an important reason to reduce coal. And I, I reject the claims that the Polish government is moving uh, quickly on climate change. They currently, as I said, use 80% of electricity coming from coal. They're only going to reduce that to 50% by 2050, and that's just not enough that we need. But I'd also, I'd also completely agree that we need further action from Germany, from the UK, uh, from, from France. I mean, I'm not here just to criticize Poland. I realize Poland is in a difficult position, and I fully appreciate the uh, difficulty for miners and traditional mining regions that we'll have um, in this country during the transition. But the reality is the current Polish government is saying there's 200 years of coal uh, left in the ground, and that's just not true if you want to do justice for the miners living in this country. You need to prepare for that transition, prepare for a move away from coal, and actually renewable energy for places like Poland right. in the longer period is going to make economic sense. Okay, so Dominic, are you preparing for renewable energy and alternatives? I mean, it's not a, it's not a law of nature that you have to burn coal forever and ever, right? Well, we are very open for the dialogue. We are very open for the new technology. As I said, this 3 billion, do uh, 3 billion euros, which will be spent for the over a thousand elect electrical buses is just to prove that we are the one of the few countries in, in Europe which really does change and we really care. So then we've got over 250 million euros for this um, more, more um, advanced uh, heaters. So we are open for, for, for the green energy, uh, but it doesn't mean that we have to resign from our black gold. It's very important because, as I said, I'm trying to look on the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's important because of the uh, safety, security. Look at Ukraine. Ukraine was promised that, that if they will give away the nuclear power, the integrity of the country will be safe. And look what's, what, what is happening now. Russia is attacking. So we need to have um, 
people who, who have credibility and we need to have a partners who really want to do the change. Show me one country in Europe which is doing as much as we do. What about China? What about other partners? And again, UN is us. We are the part of UN. European Union is us. We are the part of the European Union and we are equal like everyone else. So it's not like that someone is going to tell us or others what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. We can discuss it as a partners. We can take your advance, uh, advices, but you know, we, we are not owned by anyone. As I, again, don't get me wrong, we really love our children. We love our families. All of us are aware of this problem. This is a very serious problem. Uh, but we have to do it step by step, keeping in mind uh, who is our neighbor? I'm talking about Poland. We've got Germany, which is the, the biggest polluter, and we've got, uh, we've got Russians who are doing the deal with Nord Stream 2. Energy is the way to take over power very often. So it's, uh, it's not only about health, it's not, it's not about quality of air only, but about the, the, the security, about the safety the, of the whole nation. Mark Morano, moving away from... Oh, okay, James, you want to jump in? Jump in. Come in. Importing, um, importing coal from other countries. And so renewable energy, I think this is often left out of the conversation, that renewable energy is a very important way for countries to achieve um, energy security. And uh, for Poland to increase the amount of renewable energy that it's doing would be very valuable for its actual uh, security, as it would be in the United States and other countries. I don't want this to be all fingers pointed to Poland, because of course, well, this needs to be a global effort, and Poland is just one part of that. But they are chairing this conference, and so they have a huge influence mm -hmm. over any decisions that happen this week. Mark, you want to come in? Yes, I just want to say here, the, the key here is that, yes, uh, you can have and make a foray into tr uh, renewable energy, but you can't ban energy that works, oil, gas, coal, and mandate energy that's not ready. And if it is ready, then fine, let it take over. Why do you have to ban all the energy that's proven but it isn't itself a ban. successful? But Mark, and it isn't a ban. Point, uh, well, hold Mark, on, one point. Mark, the true. Polish coal <laughs> companies are sponsoring this conference. You think they would I'm sponsor talking something that I'm talking about the UN goals. Well, the UN climate chief has said they seek a centralized transformation. They talk about a two degree goal at 1.5. If you look at the climate gate emails from the scandal, <laughs> the, the top UN scientists admitted these numbers were pulled from thin air. This is a political move to give central planning to a few bu key bureaucrats in the EU and the United Nations to micromanage all these countries. Poland doesn't deserve that. The, U the EU wants to give Poland $1.5 billion to ease the transition as they put lay off coal workers as assuming Poland follows these UN edicts and, and goals from the UN Paris Agreement. But I would argue if Poland can reject that money, reject these goals, do what's best for Poland. That is the problem here, is that we don't need, Poland does not need to That's cede right. sovereignty over to the EU, to the United yeah. Nations. And I stand with Dominic here and I, I ask you to Poland to stay strong, take a page from the United States and other countries that are following suit. Okay, although Dominic, unlike Mark, you don't reject that climate change is going on, right? You accept that it's going on. You accept it's a problem, right, Dominic? It's it's all about it's all about var various uh, opinion of of the people who are you know working on it, scientists. <laughs> Uh, I can tell that we've got a problem in, in some of the Polish cities like anyone else. But again, we are not the biggest polluter. Uh, the Germany is over 23 percent, Great Britain, France, Italy. And then you've got somewhere Poland uh, in the end. But the, the, the whole discussion, it's not about Poland itself. Obviously, again, I'm very proud that this summit is taking place in, in Poland, but the, the, the whole problem is, is worldwide. It, it is a kind of crisis because of uh, lack of decisions. You know, uh, the, the uh, decisions and the declarations from Paris was not full, were not fulfilled. So again, it, it's about credibility of our partners. That's why I do agree with President Trump step by step, but do not give away your uh, sovereignty and, and your own safety. So, uh, you know, apart from the healthy part of, of pollution, uh, I mean unhealthy, and then, then uh, medical problems and issues, there is a political and economical war. There are many countries which would be very happy to get rid of coal in Poland and other countries. We are aware of that. That's why, yeah. A, we're going to fight with the pollution. B, we're going to spend as much as we can. C, we are already spending the most 
in European Union. So, you know, take example from Poland, uh, spend at least the same money, even though we are having uh, less money in our budget, and, and then we can talk as a partners. Again, 3 billion euros for over a thousand buses, electronic buses, that's just for the mm -hmm. beginning, and then 250 million euros for, for the heaters in the private homes. This is what we already started. So please take example from Poland. Okay, it's been a fascinating intersection of different ideas, especially given the fact that this conference has been happening in Katowice, the capital of the Silesian mining district in Poland. Gentlemen, I appreciate you Which taking proves the time. that we are open for the discussion. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm glad you, you came onto the show and you were open for Thank discussion you. here as well. James Ellsmore, Mark Morano, and Dominic Tarczynski. I've got to move on.